So in this tutorial uh, we're going to have a little look at SolidCam uh, which is an add-in for the main SolidWorks program uh, and the content that we're going to work through is in week 9 in the learning materials so before we get started I just want to point out that there, there's a, a guide to CNC machining in general there that I've shared uh, which is hosted uh, by a company called Hubs who specialize in uh, low production volume, volume uh, techniques such as uh, 3D printing. Uh, so if we have a little look at their website, just have a skim read, it kind of gives you a, a, a brief outline of what CNC machining uh, is and some of the uh, broad details of it. So that's quite useful. And the PDF that we're going to work through is this one here, so Solid Cam PDF. Uh, and the part that we're going to begin with is this part here. So if you want to download that, so I'll take a download of that. Uh, and then I've already created a uh, folder to put that in. So I've got a Solid Cam 1 folder. So I'm just going to save that into there. Uh, the PDF has opened up in the background here. So yeah, hopefully you can kind of tell from this uh, image here of the part that we're about to load into SolidWorks. Uh, it's a cavity of a mold tool. Uh, so it's similar to some of the uh, uh, molds that we've been creating in the previous weeks. So let's get uh, straight into SolidWorks. I'll uh, put this PDF on my other screen just so that I can uh, kind of refer back to it. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to load the part in uh, and it will warn you as you're loading the part that uh, this part references other parts uh, and that's because it's being created using the uh, molding tool technique that we looked at in the previous weeks. So I've only provided the part to you so you'll have to answer no when it asks you if you want to open the referenced parts you don't you don't have a copy of them so you'll just say no I don't want to open uh, a copy of the referenced parts so here's the mold tool that we're going to create it's got kind of some interesting 3d curvature to the surface here this main surface down in the uh, main cavity uh, it's got some features that will create a through hole uh, through the final uh, product. Uh, it's got some features that will create slight indentations in the surface. And then it's got some features down at this end, so these features here, uh, that are actually uh, 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 windows through the final part uh, for a, uh, a uh, snap fit fitting to clip into. So these aren't the snap fit arms themselves, these are just the little uh, windows or cut throughs uh, that those snap fit arms uh, fit in. So that's the part that we're going to have a look at and we're going to try and make a, a, uh, uh, a CAM program or a series of CAM cutting operations uh, to create this mould uh, from a block of material. So the first step here is to create a new uh, solid cam part. So the way to do that is in the tools menu, go down to solid cam and then go to new milling. Now if you're not seeing the uh, solid cam option there, uh, then you may have to go into the tools menu and go all the way down to add-ins and just make sure that you have solid cam ticked in this column. So these are all the add-ins on the left hand side that are currently active and then if you want SolidCam to always open up every time you uh, open SolidWorks you can click this one which is make the add-in active at startup of SolidWorks. So let's go back and do what I was just about to do there. So SolidCam new milling because we're creating some milling operations to uh, machine this part. So on this next screen, the only option really that we have to activate is this one here. So we're not going to choose any, uh, we're not going to change, sorry, any of these options except this box here. We, we want that to be ticked. So I think as default in the system it is unticked. 
and we want to ensure that it's ticked. Why do we do that? Because that ensures that the solid cam part that we're about to create will be saved uh, in the same folder as the solid works part that created it. Uh, and that, in my opinion, is, is far and away the, the safest way to work. Keep your solid cam parts uh, in the same folder as your solid works parts. So make sure that that's clicked and then we're not going to change anything else. So we'll click on the green tick to exit. And then we get into the uh, process of setting up our solid cam part. So you can see the system's kind of loading a lot of new looking menus uh, on the left hand side there. It kind of reoriented our part so that uh, it's upside down. So there's three broad steps that we have to address here, uh, possibly four. Uh, we need to place a coordinate system somewhere on our part. So the coordinate system is where the x and y and z axes uh, uh, are at zero. Uh, so if we go in one direction from there, we'll go into the positive numbers in each of those axes. And if we go in the other direction, we'll go into the negative numbers in each of those axes. So it's the zero point of our, of our machining operations, essentially. So I'm going to click on coordinate system. And I'm going to define this coordinate system in the kind of default manner. Uh, there's various ways that we can define these coordinate systems uh, and you can see those methods uh, shown as icons here uh, but the default one is just to select a face on the finished part itself so I'm going to select one of these faces on this side of the part so I'm just going to select one of these upper faces so this one here will be fine and what the system does then is it draws a wireframe box around the uh, outer limits of the part so we can see that wireframe box shown in grey here and then it locates our coordinate system at one corner of that box so you can see the uh, coordinate system located here and we're not going to change anything about this location although you can there are tools down below here and we'll look at those later on in the tutorial uh, or possibly in a second part to this uh, main solid cam tutorial. Uh, the only thing that we're going to check before we accept this coordinate system is the direction that Z is pointing in. So generally speaking when you're uh, CNC machining uh, Z is the direction that the tool uh, or the tool head of the milling machine will approach the part from. So our tools are going to approach from this direction from above uh, which is exactly as we want this part set up that will allow us to kind of machine out this uh, cavity here so that's okay Z is facing in the right direction so I'm going to okay that coordinate system then we get into uh, further setup of uh, uh, various values uh, or various level values uh, we're not going to change any of these again we will go into these uh, at a later point so we're just going to click on the green tick and then this last menu again we're not going to change anything at this point we will come back to this and we'll see the use that this menu uh, kind of fulfills but we'll click on the green tick there as well so we've defined our coordinate system we've got a green tick icon at the side just uh, indicating that we've defined a coordinate system we've also got a green tick at the side of the word target and what the system's done, as we created the coordinate system, it's automatically selected the shape of our SOLIDWORKS part uh, and designated that as the target shape that we're hoping to create with our machining operations. So the only thing left for us to define is the shape of the stock piece of material that we begin with uh, before we've started machining. So this will be a block of material. So we're going to define the stock block. So we'll click on stock. Again, this process is largely automated. The only thing that we have to select is the shape of the final part or the shape of the thing that we want to put a, a block of material around. So we can click on any surface on our part, any surface at all. So click. 
Then the stock shape is kind of previewed for us in green. So what the system does here is very similar to the uh, wireframe shape that it created when we uh, uh, created this coordinate system, except this time the wireframe box is slightly bigger than our part. So you can kind of see that there. Uh, it's offset by a certain amount away from our part. And if we want to see how mu much that offset is, uh, we can see those values down here. So in X positive and negative, it's 2 mil offset. Uh, in Z positive, it's 2 mil. But in Z negative, it's 6 mil. And we can see the effect of that. Uh, the amount that it's offset down here in Z negative direction uh, is larger than on any other face. So just to practice this, we're going to edit two of these values. So I'll put a 10 mil down below there and you can see the box grow. And then I'll put a 4 mil on the top and you can see the box grow at the top there as well. And just before we accept this uh, size for our stock material, I'm going to click on this option here. And it's probably easiest to illustrate what that does by, at first I'm not going to click on it and we'll see what happens and then I'll come back into this menu and then I'll click on it and we'll see the difference that it makes. So I'm going to temporarily accept that stock block and now the green preview of how big that stock block is has disappeared. and some of the operations that I'm about to create in SolidCam, it would be useful to be able to visualize that size of that stock piece of material. So I'm going to go back into stock and I'm going to select the option that I was talking about, which is this option here, add box to CAD model. So if we click on there and then we can exit this menu then we get a permanently visible version of the stock uh, material there. So we can then use that to set things like the level that the tool begins machining at. So that's quite useful. So I'm happy with all this setup now. And as with a lot of uh, menus or setup procedure, procedures in SolidWorks, there's lots of extra detail in here that uh, if you uh, progress to become a more advanced solid cam user, uh, you'll uh, undoubtedly be using all these extra setup steps. Uh, but we've kind of reached a point now that uh, we can begin creating our, our cutting operations. So I'm going to click on the green tick to accept all that. So then we get taken through into the main solid cam interface here where you'll notice on the left hand side here the uh, normal feature manager has been replaced with this uh, solid cam uh, manager here. So if we just expand that slightly you can see the tabs along the top there. Uh, there's our normal feature manager tab. This is the solid cam manager tab. So this is where we uh, uh, begin all our uh, machining operations. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to get a, a large uh, uh, milling tool and I'm going to machine away that four millimeters of excess stock from the top of our, our stock material down to the level where the part is sat. So the way that I create an operation is I right click on operations here add milling operation and it's a face mill that we're going to do initially so click on face mill that will take us through into the operation uh, uh, setup window here so we have to define what geometry we want to uh, uh, perform this operation on so luckily the system uh, when we set up a face mill kind of takes uh, this step and performs it automatically so we don't really need to do anything uh, but the option that it's kind of selected for us automatically is to mark the outside boundary of the stock itself as the thing that we want to machine away so everything all the way up to the boundary of the stock uh, the other option is part based boundary uh, 
now that would be no good for us because uh, we would be left with a little 2mm uh, wall of material that wasn't machined away around the outside of the top top face of our part. So the system selected the correct option there, stock base boundary. So we'll move on to tool, uh, which is the next option down in that menu. And we currently don't have any tools set up within SolidCam. So every tool that we need for every operation, we're going to have to create uh, uh, fr uh, from new. So the way that we do that is we click on select and that takes us into the tool table for this particular uh, solid cam uh, sequence. And as I've already said, we don't currently have any tools in our tool table. Uh, when we do, they will appear in this table here. So this is the tool table. Uh, in order to create a new tool, uh, you just uh, decide which of these tool types you want to create. So we want a face mill and then you just double click. And a new face mill tool in this case will be placed in the uh, uh, tool table, in this case at position number one or tool number one. So all the tools will be numbered consecutively uh, as we create them. And just before we exit this menu or this window, uh, just notice that all the various dimensions for the tools that we create are all uh, available for editing. So the key one here, or one of the key dimensions for a face mill, is the overall diameter that the face mill cuts uh, away as it passes over the part. So that D value there is quite a key one. Uh, other very important uh, dimensions are how deep uh, can the uh, tool cut. So that would be uh, cutting length here. So it's there, that little section there. So if the tool has got uh, uh, sharp tips on it like this, so that is a uh, tip tool. Uh, how high are the tips? Because that's the deepest that you can cut in a single pass on your part. So that's quite a key one as well. And then later on, what we'll look at are uh, the uh, cutting conditions that the tool can handle. So feeds and speeds is what is being uh, referred to here. Uh, so this is to do with how quickly is the tool pushed through the material in the horizontal axes, how quickly can the tool uh, enter the material in the vertical, uh, and how quickly is it spinning as well. So that's referred to as uh, speeds and feeds. Uh, you can see the letters there. Feed uh, is re represented with an F and then speed with an S. But we're not going to change any of the defaults for this particular operation. We're just learning uh, kind of where these options are at this point. So I'm just going to accept this tool by clicking on the blue tick. So that's the tool set up. So we'll move on down to the uh, next option, which is the levels of the cut or of the face mill operation. So the upper level, which I'm about to specify, so if you click on upper level, this is at what level does the tool expect to encounter material uh, or the first level, the highest level that we it, it should ex expect material. And because we've not uh, performed any cuts on this stock material yet, it is the top of the stock itself. So this is why it can be useful to be able to see a representation of the stock it means that you can click on the top of that stock. So that's what I'm going to do here just by clicking on that edge. And that tells the system that is where it will encounter material for the first time. Uh, or that is the Z level. Z being upwards and downwards in our case. So Z. So click on the green tick and then face depth. This is how deep do I want this uh, tool to cut to. So I'm just going to pick one of these faces on the top of this mold tool. So there we'll do. And then click on OK. And then the final thing that I'm going to change is just how deep do I want each uh, m machining step to machine to. So I'm going to reduce this slightly to 2. And then I'm happy with this operation. And I want to be able to see 
a preview of uh, what the toolpath will look like. So in order to do that I click on save and calculate. Uh, I get a warning telling me that the coordinate system for this part is below the upper level of this cut. I'm aware of that. The coordinate system is sat on the top of the part and this cut has been set with an upper level which is the top of the stock. So I'm going to say don't ask me this question again. Yes. So that is what I get in terms of a preview of the toolpath. So the tool begins here uh, at the circle, it drops down to the first level, slices across the part, exits the part there, moves across slightly and then comes back again and then does that repeated times. Uh, so that's what the toolpath looks like uh, when it's kind of traced out in the air. Uh, we can actually simulate that tool cutting the material from the part. So uh, I'm going to click on this icon here which is the simulate icon and I'm going to ensure that some options are selected here, some specific options. So I want solid verification on. So make sure that that's on. I want to switch off show toolpath so you can see that is toolpath on that is toolpath off. So I want to make sure that's off. I want to make sure that tools are shown in 3D so I'm going to click that option on. I want to want a readout over here of all the simulation data so that is that icon. So there's the simulation data. That will tell us things like the feed and speed uh, of the current uh, machine in operation. And then I want to ensure show stock is selected I want to ensure colorized stock is selected and in this case I've put multi-core support on for this multi-core processor in this machine. Uh, that option is uh, entirely up to you. You can activate it and sometimes it will speed up the simulation calculation uh, but uh, sometimes it causes issues so you can switch it off if you need to. And then I'm just going to ensure that this speed slider is all the way down to the slowest speed down here and then I'm going to press play and you can see a visualization of the tool uh, cutting the top of our stock material so that's all we want to see so you can see we're now down at the part level so that's okay so I'm going to exit the simulation there just by clicking on that uh, exit uh, that X and then I'm going to exit this operation because I'm happy with it so exit and then I don't want to see that preview of the toolpath uh, from this point onwards so I'm going to click there to get rid of it so we can see now we have a single uh, machine in operation in our uh, operation section of our solid cam manager so there it is face mill uh, updated stock T1 so that tells us that it's face milling up and that it's using tool number one uh, if we want to edit that we can right click on it and go to edit and it, that just takes us back into the uh, setup window for that particular operation so we can make any changes in there and then uh, save and calculate again and see what effect that has so let's create another operation and this time we're going to begin to take out some of the material out of uh, uh, this main uh, body of the part. Uh, so all, is the, all of this kind of indentation here, we want to clear the majority of that material out. So I'm going to right click on operations and I, I want to use a 3D milling operation. So uh, the face mill is what's referred to as a 2.5D or 2.5D uh, machine in operation. That is because, largely speaking, uh, as, the, as the tool is cutting, uh, it doesn't move in Z at all. So it moves in Z in order to position itself to get ready to cut, but then it, the Z uh, position gets locked and then it just cuts in X and Y, so horizontally. Uh, and then it will exit the uh, stock material and then drop down again and then lock itself in Z and then cut again. So you end up with a flat 
face. So that's a 2.5D. We now want to machine uh, a, a curved surface down here. Uh, so this uh, curved surface of our, our part ultimately, uh, but the mold tool. So we're going to create a 3D uh, milling operation. And the 3D milling operations tend to live around here in the menu. And the one that we're going to use is something called 3D High Speed Roughing. Uh, so it's this one, 3D HSR. So roughing operations are designed to quickly remove uh, the majority of, of material uh, uh, in a piece of uh, geometry or a shape. So in our case we're going to quickly remove the majority of the material down in this area here on our, our mold tool. So the setup is similar to what we've done with face mill but there are a few little uh, differences as well. So as with the face mill, uh, the first uh, menu option here, or icon, geometry, has largely been taken care of, uh, uh, of by the system. So the system has essentially looked at our target shape that we're hoping to machine and it's going to use that as the uh, uh, driving shape for this operation. So there's nothing for us to change here. Uh, it's selected the target. If we want to see what the target looks like, we can click on show and it highlights the entire part. So that is where the geometry is coming from to drive this 3D roughing operation. So we'll move on down to tool and we're going to click on select again because we're going to create a new tool just like we did last time. And this time we're going to create a flat ended mill. So it's just referred to as an end mill. But you can see that the end of that tool is flat. So double click on that. And I think we'll modify the diameter of this tool slightly. So I'll just have a look in the uh, PDF that we're following through. Uh, I think we'll make it slightly bigger. Uh, we'll make it 10 millimeters like that. And again, we're not going to uh, realistically create a tool at this point in the uh, uh, tutorial. In reality what you would do is you would check that this size of tool is available uh, and then you would set suitable uh, feeds and speeds for the actual cutting operation that you want to do with this tool. Uh, but we're just learning SOLIDWORKS so we'll, we'll not go into uh, that much detail at this point. So I'll click on the green tick, that's our tool. I'm going to move on down this menu to the next option, Constraint Boundaries. So this is similar to what the geometry did for our face mill. Uh, it essentially marked out the area that we wanted to concentrate on. So with the face mill it was the entire st st uh, stock block. In this uh, operation, this 3D roughing, we want to keep the tool focused down in this cavity area here. So we've already addressed these faces on the top of our mold tool. We don't need to address them again. So we like to we'd like to focus our uh, uh, our boundary shape to be just down in this area here. So we can do that here within with constraint boundaries. So we're going to switch it from created automatically to created manually. There we go. And then we're going to create some new geometry. So I'm clicking on new here. And what, what we want to do here is we want to want to select the perimeter shape of this kind of trough area. But in order to do that, I'm going to switch off two options, which are often switched on by default. I'm going to switch off tangent propagation and constant Z. Now they're normally there to help you select numerous edges from your model. But in this specific instance, they're going to make our job harder. So I've switched them off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and just select all these edges so you may have to reorient the model slightly, that constitute the outside shape of that trough when viewed from above. 
So you can see all the edges in yellow I've already selected. There's a tiny little edge there shown in blue. There it is. So you make sure that you get that one. And then this one here. And then this one here. And when you get back to your starting point, like I've just done, this window will pop up somewhere on the screen. It will say OK to accept. And then you want to click on yes. So you can see what we've got selected there in pink. We've marked out the boundary of that trough shape there. So that's all I need to do in, in uh, constraint boundaries. Just mark out the outer limits of the trough. So I'll click on the green tick. That's our constraint boundaries uh, uh, set up. Then I'm going to go down to passes. So, so in passes, uh, one of the things that I'm going to change is the offset between uh, the tool itself and the wall of the finished part. So generally with roughing passes, uh, you will want to put some form of offset uh, because the roughing pass is often done very quickly so uh, the tool uh, can kind of deform out of po the position that you think it is in so if you maintain an offset from the finished part uh, you can uh, uh, reduce any risks of, of putting any marks in the finished surface that, that you don't intend to be there. But I am going to reduce this offset down slightly so I'm going to put 0 0.25 so I've entered 0 0.25 in there and then I'm going to save and calculate this operation. Now the calculation of 3D machining operations takes a little bit longer uh, than the calculation of 2.5D because the the tool paths that are being calculated are more complex uh, by the addition of that uh, third uh, dimension. So you'll know when it's completed because you'll be able to see this uh, far more complicated tool path here. So let's have a look at what that achieves with the simulation. So before I run the simulation I'm just going to turn off the visualization of the toolpath just there and then I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that I can see the uh, block of material a little bit more easily. And then often what can help with the uh, kind of legibility of these simulations is just to switch the model to wireframe display mode. Uh, that can sometimes help with uh, the ability to see the details in the simulation itself. So let's just play this simulation now. And what you'll probably notice about this is the the apparent speed of the simulation is now much much slower. So this doesn't really relate directly to the speed that uh, uh, the tool will be moving at. Uh, this is just that these operations are more complicated for the system to simulate than the simple face mill. So the tool is moving in kind of complicated curve paths. Uh, so with that being said, it's probably uh, more time efficient for us to speed up this simulation or the apparent speed of it. And you can see when you slide the slider all the way to the fastest speed, you can kind of appreciate the, the various levels being cut away from this part. So the tool is kind of whizzing around. Uh, we're getting a readout here. It's telling us what the feed rate is and the uh, rotation speed of the tool. Uh, it's telling us how much time has elapsed. Uh, if we were to perform this operation uh, on a real CNC machine. And that's the machining operation complete. So you can see it's taken the majority of the material out of that cavity area. But it obviously hasn't achieved the final finished uh, uh, shape. It's just got us somewhere near to the uh, finished shape of the actual uh, mold tool itself. But it's taken the bulk of the material. And that's what a roughing operation uh, is intended to do. So let's run a slightly different uh, simulation type now. I'm going to run a solid verify simulation so I clicked on solid verify just for reference the standard simulation that we were just using was host CAD so that's the one that the system defaults to when I using solid verify 
and even though I've got the simulation speed set to max I'm going to click on this option turbo which should simulate it even quicker so this is the quickest method of getting to the end of a simulation run so turbo and the way that the system gets there quicker is it doesn't really show you a preview of what's going on as it's going on it just runs the simulation in the background and then when it's finished we'll see the effect that that simulation has had so we've just got to sit here as these numbers kind of change in front of us and there we go uh, when it's complete we'll see the effect of it and the reason that I'm using solid verify this time is I want to use this option here which is a method that we can use to visualize how far away we are currently from the finished uh, part shape so if we just execute this at the top of the screen there it colors the part in various different colors and these colors are represented on this scale at the top of the screen here so everything that's in blue is either 0.1 or more so 0.1 to infinity uh, away from the finished shape everything that's in yellow is exactly on the finished part shape so that's uh, yellow uh, anything that's in green is slightly oversized so green areas are anywhere between 0 and 0 0.01 so that's where the green areas are so I'm now going to modify this scale slightly so that it's more useful for me to kind of assess uh, what I'm looking at so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the max value to 1 and then I'm going to set the next one down to 0 0.1 and then I'm going to leave the others as they are but I want to separate out these two greens they're too similar to each other in terms of color so I'm going to set this darker green to bright pink so that I can easily tell the the differences between these areas then I'll click on execute so that's arguably more useful so I can see some areas are are one or more millimeters away from their final shape and some areas are between 0 0.1 and 1 from their final shape so this tool is quite useful for visualizing how how much work you still uh, have to do to the part to get it into its final form so let's exit from the simulation and move on so there's the exit in from the simulation so we're happy with this uh, uh, operation so we're going to save it but rather than saving and then exiting like we did last time so we clicked on that icon last time we're going to save save and create a copy of this operation uh, because the next operation that we want to do is going to be very similar in its setup to this one so we can copy all the setup of this one and just change some uh, small values to create this new operation so this is the icon for save and copy click on that uh, we get the original uh, operation in our uh, feature tree or in our operation tree there and then we get a copy of it and we're now inside that copy so we can make changes to this copy and the first thing that I'm going to change I'm going to change the uh, the type of roughing operation from just plain uh, high-speed machining roughing to rest roughing now rest removal operations or rest operations are uh, operations which uh, go back into the part and just address the areas that were not machined in the previous step so in this case we created a lot of stepped areas inside the part uh, and the ends of those steps were were further away from the finished shape than the kind of base of those steps so this rest operation goes in and specifically targets the high points on each one of those steps so that's the difference between a standard roughing op which just addresses the entire uh, shape that needs removing uh, and then a rest roughing op which targets itself at only the 
places that were missed on the previous operation. So rest roughing we need to change it to. Tool we're also going to change. So one of the reasons that we got that stepped effect was that our tool had a 90 degree edge on it or a 90 degree corner. So there's a preview of the tool here and if I zoom right in you can see that bottom face and that vertical face they meet at 90 degrees at a sharp point so you're always going to get a stepped effect the tool that we're going to create now has a, a nice curved transition from the vertical to the horizontal edge so that will allow it to get into some of those corners a little bit more easily and match the curve the nice curve of our part or our mold uh, more closely so I'm going to click on select and create a new tool now and it's going to be a bull nose tool so I'm just going to refer to the PDF to see what settings I decided for this and we're going to get a 8 millimeter bull nose so we've gone down slightly in diameter hopefully this will also allow us to get into some of those areas that we missed on the last pass and I'm going to give it a reasonably generous uh, uh, corner radius here I'm gonna go 1.5 mil and then one thing that we haven't done yet so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make this tool setup window slightly smaller if I can here we go so you may just have to kinda play about with some of the space in here if you click on this option show hide tool near mouse so click then when you move your mouse into the display window here you'll get a visualization of how big your tool appears relative to the part itself so that can be quite useful when you're selecting a tool size just to help you visualize how big that tool that you've just created appears uh, relative to the part itself uh, so yeah that's not 100% required it's just a nice uh, visual reference for the user so I'm going to accept that tool so I click on select constraint boundaries are going to remain the same uh, passes I'm now going to uh, uh, maybe move this tool a little bit closer to the finished shape so maybe 0 0.15 And then I'm going to save and calculate. So here's that toolpath visualized in the background. So there it is. So let's have a simulation of that just to see what is happening. So maybe in this instance I'll go straight into solid verify. Uh, and we will actually watch the tool moving this time so I'll click on play rather than turbo so you can see the effect that that's having uh, it's putting much finer cuts in there and because it's got a uh, radius on its uh, outer edge it's getting much nearer to the finished shape as well so there we go that is finished and then if I put my rainbow plot back on and then execute uh, so most areas now are somewhere between 0 0.1 and 1 millimeters away from their final finished shape so we've improved matters if you remembered before down in the cavity here there were a lot of blue areas so we're getting nearer to our, our final finished shape for our part so then I'm going to exit uh, that uh, operation, uh, sorry that simulation, then I'm going to exit the operation as well. I'm going to hide the uh, toolpath. So at this point we're going to move from roughing operations to finishing operations. So the general order of, uh, uh, of work when you're creating a, a curved kind of mold shape that we are creating at the moment is you'll do a certain quantity of roughing operations to remove the bulk of material uh, 
and then you'll switch uh, when you've removed that bulk or that main uh, volume of material to uh, more targeted finishing operations uh, that get you to the the final finished shape of the mold part itself so that's what we're about to do now so let's go right click milling operation uh, we're in the same area of the menu but whereas before we were in 3d high-speed roughing now we're going to go across into 3d high-speed machining and within uh, uh, high-speed machining or 3D high-speed machining we have a lot more uh, options in terms of machining strategies or a solid cam refers to them technologies so you can see all the different variations of 3D high-speed machining uh, that we can experiment with uh, initially we'll work with the kind of default one that we uh, uh, get presented with when we create one of these operations which is constant Z machining so I still don't need to input anything here for the geometry tab the system is using the shape of the final target part so target there as the driving uh, geometry uh, to create the tool paths from so I don't need to change anything there the tool I'm going to start using uh, ball ended tools which are very good for achieving uh, smooth uh, mold surfaces so I don't currently have a ball ended to, uh, tool so I'm going to click on select and then double click on ball nose mill and then I'm going to set this to a moderate diameter I don't want anything as small as 6 at the moment so I'll, I'll have a 10 mil diameter uh, yeah and then I'm happy with that maybe I would uh, kind of modify the total length uh, if we were doing this for real uh, but then I'm gonna accept that so we've uh, applied the tool constraint boundaries I'm going to reuse the boundary that I created for the uh, roughing stages because I still want this tool to concentrate on the geometry which is down in this kind of trough area of the part and luckily the systems defaulted to use that so any uh, collection of edges that you select are referred to as contours so when we selected those edges to mark out uh, the edges of the trough that we wanted to machine it was named as just contour any subsequent uh, edges get named as contour 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and onwards and if you want to check which one you currently have selected you can click on show and it will be displayed in the uh, graphics area so yeah that's definitely the one that we used before so then I'm going to move on to passes so we can see because we're uh, in uh, finishing operations now the system doesn't put any wall offset or any floor offset on at all now we can add some ourselves but the default is that because these are finishing operations they are there to finish the the shape of the block of material to its final shape uh, so we're going to leave these at uh, zero and then the only other thing that we, we might want to uh, change is the step down uh, distance so this is between the uh, 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 cuts that the system is going to make how much should it move vertically between each one I think we'll try a one millimeter step down and see what the effect of that is but we may come back in here and reduce that down uh, just to get a uh, finer finish on the mold so I'm going to do a save and calculate so there's the toolpath visualized in the background there so now I'm going to do a simulate and I'll probably do a host CAD just to begin with so I'll turn the toolpath off uh, run the simulation so we can see the tool kind of whizzing about there it's clearly taking some material off this uh, central piece here and we can see it's taking material off the sides as well
So it's finished now. One thing it has caught is that there's been a clash between the tool and the stock itself. So if we look at the tool there, the yellow area represents the area that has teeth on the tool that can do the actual work of cutting. And you can see that when it tries to reach the uh, deepest cut down near the bottom of this uh, uh, island here, this protrusion, uh, the actual section of the tool that doesn't have teeth on it, so the grey section, is coming into contact with this uh, wall here that's already been cut. Now that's not a terrible clash, uh, but it is worth noting. So maybe at this point what we would do is we would go back in and select a different tool for that operation. So we would have to ensure that any tool that we bought in uh, had a cutting length, so the cutting length here is currently 24, that was deep enough not to uh, cause that problem. So let's correct for that now. So the shoulder length of this tool is 30, so I'm going to increase the cutting length to just below that and have the cutting length at 29. And then if we recalculate and re-simulate, hopefully that will have solved that issue. And this is often the way that you work in SolidCam. Uh, you will use the simulation almost as an experimentation tool. Uh, and then you'll come back into this menu and make subtle changes to get a more favourable outcome from the simulation steps. So let's run that simulation again. If I can run it in turbo, I will. Yeah, it's not an option because we're using solid verification. But I'll leave it running there. Uh, and it shouldn't take too long. So there we go. So it completed that time. So it, obviously we that increase that we made in the uh, cutting length there solved that issue. So at that point we could uh, we could do another solid verify and see how close we are to the final part and uh, we could uh, make a copy of this uh, uh, finishing operation once we had that data and maybe experiment with some of the uh, alternative uh, uh, technology or cutting strategies just to see if we could get nearer and nearer to the finished part shape. Uh, and we will have a look at that in the next tutorial, uh, how we might refine the finish of the mould. Uh, and then after that, how we might uh, actually cut these through holes uh, from the opposite side of the part and cut these uh, water cooling holes as well.